fabulous today with my swooshy ponytail and pink lipstick. Hey everyone, it's Han and it's time for another crochet tutorial. I need to stop flailing so much in the beginning of my videos. So today I am going to be fulfilling a much asked request, a much requested video. Um, and that is for a cute little crochet dice bag. For those of you with a keen eye who are super nerds, 10 out of 10, I'm wearing a Gilmore's Glorious Goods t-shirt. If you get the reference, you win. If you don't get the reference, well, you're missing out on something amazing. I love this t-shirt so much. So I started making these a while ago for my D&D friends, um, and then I started to sell them, and then people asked for, tutor asked for a tutorial, and I declined politely, but now I've decided to stop selling them, so I am going to come out with the tutorial. And I've just got my little beaded dragon friend on. And there will not be a tutorial for that because I that is a paid for pattern. But if you are interested in having your own little dragon, I do actually sell them in my Etsy shop and they're meant to be for progress keepers and stitch markers. And I use him as a stitch marker throughout this tutorial. But anyway, um, you didn't click on this tutorial to watch me waffle on. This is a good tutorial for beginners. It holds seven dice quite comfortably. And I have seven dice in there. Super cute, really easy, perfect for beginners. Has very few, very simple techniques. And yeah, let's just get on with the tutorial, shall we? So to make your very own dice bag, you're going to need a four millimeter crochet hook, three and a half millimeter crochet hook, double knit or worsted weight yarn, four ply yarn or fingering weight yarn, as it's also known, tapestry needle, stitch marker, speed, and scissors, yeah. Um, I'm just using acrylic yarn, cotton yarn will also work well. You can also use double knit yarn um, instead of the fingering weight yarn. I just use that for the string of the bag. So we are starting out with the main body of our bag. Um, I've written out the pattern in both UK and US terminology. I am, as I'm speaking it, I'm going to be using UK terminology. Into a magic loop, we are going to be double crocheting six stitches. Also we're going to be double crocheting six times. So that is when you insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert your hook into the loop, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both of these loops on your hook. And you're going to do that six times in total. Um, I don't speed up at the beginning but I start to skip rows as the rows get longer. And double count your stitches. Then you're going to pull that magic loop closed um, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube to describe how to do a magic loop, far better than I am at explaining how to do them. So now we are going to be doing two double crochet into each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches. Um, and we are just going to be increasing the bottom of our bag. Oh, my foot's gone numb. Just gotta rearrange how I'm sat, don't mind me. So yeah, I'm gonna just speed this up a little bit because otherwise it'll be a little bit boring to watch. And then you'll listen to me ramble on for longer and nobody does that out of choice. So this is me grabbing my stitch marker, my, my little dragon, and I'm clipping him on, on the last stitch of the round. You can put him wherever you like, but that's where I put it. So we're going to do one double crochet into the first stitch, then we're going to do two double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to increase on every other stitch, and we're going to make this row go from 12 stitches all the way up to 18 stitches. And I need to sit up again. <laughs> I swear nobody else shifts about as much as their voiceovers and they just get comfortable from the beginning, but uh, apparently that is too much common sense for me and I need to wiggle the whole time. Also, this font makes um, asterisks, 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 ax, ah, yeah, into little hearts, which is quite cute. Um, so that's a fun discovery I just discovered in a fun way. They won't be hearts in the description box where it's all written out, I apologize. So we're gonna move our little stitch marker whilst we do the last two stitches into that last stitch or the last increase of the row I suppose and then we're going to pop him back on the last stitch of the round we just did. So 
one double crochet in the next two stitches and then two double crochet in the stitch after that. So every three stitches you're going to be increasing and we're going to do that the whole way around until you get to 24 stitches which means you're going to repeat that whole thing six times in total. We're increasing in multiples of six because uh, that is how it works. If you start off with five stitches, you increase in multiples of five. It ensures you get a nice even increase. Listen to me sounding like I know what I'm talking about. You and I both know that I just, I just hope for the best. I opened a window to let some fresh air in and listen to the birdies, but now I'm just cold. Reattaching the stitch marker onto the last stitch that we just crocheted. Now, row five, one double crochet in the next three stitches and then two double crochet in the stitch after that. And then we're going to repeat that six times in total for a total of 30 stitches. This is the last time we are increasing it's only a little bag. You can keep increasing if you want to make a bigger bag, that isn't a problem. Um, just increase in multiples of six. So, for, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I don't want to make it too confusing. But if you want to keep increasing to make a larger bag and make it longer and stuff, that is fine. I need to make another one for my boyfriend. Uh, he stores two sets of dice in his bag and it's not quite big enough. So I need to make him a new bag. But he hasn't told me what colours he wants yet. So shift that little guy out the way. Last two stitches. And that is what it should look like. It looks a little bit like a hexagon. And my bead just came and flew at me. Right, reattach your stitch marker. Then in the back loop only, you're going to do one double crochet in each stitch round. So crochet stitches are made up of two loops. You want to go into the back loop only and just do one double crochet in each stitch round for a total of 30 stitches. Like I said, we're not increasing anymore. Um, this will just create a nice little ridge for the base of the bag, so when we start going upwards. And yes, I skipped a little bit, because um, I didn't think that it's interesting to watch. I'm just going into that last stitch. I managed to keep the stitch marker on this time. Then move it up. So now rows seven to 19 is one double crochet in each stitch around. So 30 stitches per row, um, just one stitch, one stitch in each stitch round. Nice and easy, nice and simple for the next 12 rows. 13 rows. Yeah, I did just count. Um, because it's inclusive. That's unlucky. I should have made it one shorter. So now we are about to start row 20. This is what it should look like approximately. So we're going to chain two. This counts as our first treble. We're going to do one treble into the first into the next stitch. So yarn over your hook. Insert your needle into the next stitch and yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then we're going to chain one, then we're going to skip a stitch, and then we're going to do a treble into the next two stitches. So now we're in the little heart bit. So one treble in the next two stitches, chain one, and sort your yarn out, and skip the next stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that the whole way around until you have a total of 20 trebles and 10 chains between them, I think. I didn't, I counted it in my head after the fact. And it doesn't help that I accidentally increased in it. Oh, I sneezed. Um, I accidentally increased in it. So my number count isn't perfectly even. Next two rows, you're going to do one double crochet in each stitch around. That includes doing a double crochet into the chain between your two trebles. Um, so you're going to get back up to 30 stitches in total. And I forgot to explain that you had to join at the end um, of the row, but that's fine. I'm sure you saw. So now you're going to finish off 
and weave in your ends. As always, there are plenty of tutorials showing you how to properly do this. I haven't ever watched any of them. I've taught myself how to crochet predominantly um, and therefore I've taught myself how to weave in ends. So I don't know if I do it properly, so I don't feel comfortable showing you Ah, oh, this is how to weave in ends when I don't probably don't do it properly. Just make sure you weave them in securely and so they're not going to come out anytime soon. I've never had any problem with mine, but yeah. Do -do 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 -do. You have finished the back portion. Da -da 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 yeah. So now you are going to grab your three and a half millimeter crochet hook and your four ply yarn, or your fingering it, weight yarn, whatever you call it. And now we're going to be chaining the uh, the string for the bag. You can you can keep using double knit if you want to. Um, that's not a problem. I think I chained around 60 stitches. Once again, I didn't count. I'm not entirely sure. Play it by ear. Um, it's a free pattern, you know? I can't be too exact with you. I don't want you to get used to these kinds of things. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, obviously. And yes, if you want to keep using uh, double knit yarn, that is perfectly fine. You can keep using your four millimeter hook. You don't have to go down a hook size. It's not a problem. I just like the thinner yarn and I don't know why. So now we're going to finish that off and grab our tapestry needle and thread it. Doo -doo -doo. And then you're going to find the opposite end to the end of the, like the last the end of the row, you're going to find the opposite side to the end of the row because the end of the row is the back of your bag. And you're just going to start weaving in and out with your string you just made. So in and out of those gaps between the treble clusters. I suppose they're not a cluster because they're not in the same state. You know what I mean, the trebleness. And yes, I accidentally sewed through a stitch, but I fixed it, so it's all good. So then threading my needle again, I'm just going to grab the pony bead that I am using. It's just a plastic pony bead. You can use whatever you want. It's up to you. Uh, metal will probably tarnish over time, but like I said, it's up to you. Just make sure the hole is large enough to fit your yarn through. Now I'm going to make some cheats tassels. Um, I don't, don't even know if they're cheats tassels. I'm just grabbing some of the four ply yarn and cutting it into strings. I'm going to take two of those strings. I'm going to thread my needle. So professional. And then I am going to adjust the focus of the camera. I'm going to thread them just above the knot at the end of my chain string and tie them in a knot all together. So try not to make them too short, otherwise it's really difficult to tie the knots. And this should, in theory, stop the bead from falling off. Um, if you need to tie a couple of knots on top of each other, also fine, but yeah. Then you're just gonna repeat that with the other one. Wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. Yeah. Then take both ends and trim them so they're about the same length. Or you don't have to, that's up to you. And yeah, that is your bag finished. Grab your dice. These are my dice. I was given to them by one of my friends. Thanks, Big K. Um, and pop them in the bag. And now your bag is ready to use. And if you want to, you can take your handy dandy stitch marker who's kept you company the whole way through making it and clip it onto your bag. Because how cute is that? Super cute. Yeah. So you can fit seven, uh, seven dice quite comfortably in here. And yeah, happy rolling. So now you know just how easy it is to make your very own crochet dice bags. It's quite simple, actually. Um, you can edit the pattern in any way that you like. And I forgot to say it, but I've probably said it in voiceover, which I haven't recorded yet. Um, the full pattern is in the description box below. I've written in both US and UK terminology this pattern, I speak it in UK terminology because obviously that is the terminology that I'm used to. No 
one that I use. Um, but yeah, super cute. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to let me know that you enjoyed it by hitting that thumbs up button. Bing. It means a lot to me and feel free to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I post a knitting and crochet podcast um, every fortnight here in the Corner of Craft and then I post craft tutorials like this one on a Sunday and then in the Thursdays in between I think of something to film and I post it. Um, usually snort, snort, short little tutorial is what I wanted to say, not snort. If you do happen to recreate anything using one of my tutorials, I would like to see a picture of it, so feel free to post the picture on social media using hashtag the corner of craft. Um, and I will check it out, I will like it, and yeah. Links to all of my social media can be found in the description box below, as well as, bada bing, um, to there as well. So feel free to follow me on social media if that is something that you think you are interested in. Um, just hop on over there. Oh, I feel so swooshy with a high ponytail. My hair is technically too short and it's all falling down at the back because I had so much hair cut off. Oh, my hair matches my t-shirt. Anyone would think I like this color. If you know anyone who would also like to learn how to make these dice packs, don't forget to share this video with them. And if you were sent this video from one of your friends, your friend is an amazing person. But yes, thank you so much for watching. It truly means the world to me, as I say in every video. And yeah. I shall see you very soon in Thursday's video, probably. Bye.